Well, if I were to start anywhere, I would just want to uh, say thanks to uh, District 6 and um, our department. And I, I, I start with the marketing department in hosting something like this. Um, but you can't just end there because I saw coaches out helping with buses. Uh, the swim coach, I ran into her and all the football players when I walked through the door cheering. And, um, it, you know, they had coaches, they had student athletes helping. Um, they had everybody in the department, you, you know, to, is a part of this. And, and it's a big deal in women's basketball, this initiative to, to do something that's uh, educational when they come in and, and, and the kids come to this game. And, and it's great for our program to, to get that kind of environment. So really, really appreciate that. Um, I don't think it was totally designed to be Idaho State, but uh, Idaho State has been a nemesis for us and, and obviously knocked us out of the tournament last year. Um, so, you know, it was, it was kind of fun to, to have this game then. But again, I know no one cares, you know, everybody, we would do this every day of the week because it's always a lot better to play in front of, in front of people in the stands. So uh, I really do appreciate them doing this on a, a 12 o'clock game. But clearly, uh, you know, our team was, is, our team is just getting better. I just like where we are. I like the fact that we, we are a little bit better defensively over the last couple of weeks. Um, I think Idaho State kind of hurt us a little bit with their pick and roll game early in the game. And I think we made some adjustments and, and then ultimately guarded them unbelievably well for the entire game. And, and um, I don't think we were perfect offensively, but we pretty much had a perfect second quarter. And that can sure carry you in a game where um, against a good defensive team that does stuff a lot of things and not let you uh, run some of the stuff that you like to do. But uh, I think we can look at the second quarter and go, if we could put some games together like that and more quarters like that, then we'd be a hard team to beat. All right, uh, and you kind of touched on it with Idaho State, but I know this isn't really when you want to, when you want to beat them, but how, how nice does it feel to pick up the season sweep after they knocked you out last year? Well, I mean, honestly, as you probably have a little bit of extra, I think, in preparation. And I certainly have a lot of ammunition to talk to the team about. That's probably more than anything. And I know our o older players, our freshmen are clueless. They know, they know nothing. Mm -hmm. But our older players certainly feel a little bit of um, extra motivation playing them. But, you know, you can't live on that because once you start playing, it doesn't really matter who you're playing. And I think really the ultimately – the goal is is to to this was a, the, our most important game of the season just because it was our next one and we're going to be happy about this and enjoy this today but tomorrow we got to prepare for the next most important game on our schedule and it happens to be a team that beat us but um, you know this we're still we're still in February so all these games are trying to get you to be prepared for March and uh, we're using this to to hopefully continue to get better and I keep telling the team I I don't think. It, Every team in the country can still get better in February, uh, but the good ones still do. And I think I think we're we're a team that has some potential. I think especially when you start looking at our younger players and uh, Alexis Chapman and and Tiana Clark that can put points on the board. They can make us better if we can get some consistency out of them. So um, you know February games are important because they get you ready for March. And and so we're every one of them is pretty important to us. Okay, awesome. And you said uh, you do think you can improve. Is that just inconsistency across the board, or where, what areas, uh, like in specific? You know, I think for our team, we need we need that that uh, we can go through stretches where we have two bad possessions, and uh, and even in practice, we we try to do this where you'll go, what just happened in the last two possessions, and at times they might not remember if we had two possessions in a row or three possessions in a row. And so we're trying to get a little bit better understanding that, oh, we just didn't score three possessions in a row. So you got to have that, that, that grit to go, we got to score this one. We got to get a good shot. And, and our kids are getting more cognizant of that. And I think that's a big step for us to get more competitive within the game. You got to compete within the game. It's not just a quarter. It's more individual possessions that I think we have a chance to continue to get better with. Okay, awesome. And then all night, really, what was working so well for you guys defensively? Well, I just think our team is, is really good at, at the scouting report. They, they know personnel, especially the second time you play someone. We had a good plan and, and good matchups on how we wanted to guard people. Um, we, we ended up guarding their pick and roll offense 
a lot better, and then we rebounded. They're a really good rebounding team, and they can hurt you if they get offensive rebounds. But I thought, you know, we just played personnel perfectly for the most part, and as long as we were matching them a little bit on the on the rebounding edge, I thought, you know, we, we pretty much did exactly what we wanted to do. Okay. Awesome. And uh, so did anything change out of that first offensively, or did you did you say anything in the huddle, or did, did they just start making that, <laughs> making shots? Well, it helps when Savannah Smith makes three, yeah. you know, 30-footers, and I think Crystal made a three. So that's probably where most of our threes came were in that second quarter and uh, just made really good decisions. Then you get two people coming at Savannah Smith, and she, she finds Bridget or Abby Kine in for easy layups. And, um, again, it, that's what – if we're at our best, that's, that's, that's what happens is you gotta, you got to really stop Savannah Smith, but she's unselfish and she finds someone that's open. And if that person can make that shot, then, then they got to stop that and then we pass the ball to the next guy and, and that person. So it's that balance that our team has, four people in double figures, a lot of other people score. If we can continue to have that kind of balance, we, I think we can be, continue to, to be successful. Cool. And uh, so how does, it, how does it just feel to pick up a good, easy win, especially kind of in the grind of a conference season where you're, you're really grinding out close games? Well, I don't think anything's easy, and you don't, feel, you don't feel good until the game, the last buzzer hits. I mean, you're completely nervous and scared before the game starts and unsure of how you'll respond to good teams. But, um, you know, again, I, I just I have a lot of confidence in where this team is and, and their competitiveness and their leadership and um, their togetherness. I mean, we're playing well together. We're very committed to being good at what we do and sharing the basketball, and they, ultimately they want to win, and they're competitive. So if we keep practicing with that kind of urgency and, and showing up on game day with that kind of urgency, then I think we can, um, you know, at least we can compete in the games that are ahead of us. Oh, awesome. And uh, just last thing, going back to the Hoops and Health Day, how, how nice is it playing in front of such an intense crowd? Well, it just, it's just it's awesome. I mean, again, I don't think it's real common that our kids get to play in front of, you know, two, 3,000 people. Um, I hope someday <laughs> that every game is, is like that here, maybe not with all the kids, but uh, adults too. But um, so it's, it's an awesome it's an awesome opportunity. It's, a, it's an awesome responsibility, too. I love that our players are great role models for those kids, and they can look out there and maybe aspire to, to do something that they're passionate about and pursue what, they're, what our kids are doing. And, and uh, again, it, it takes so much work from the, the athletic department and, and District 6 to make this an educational experience, but also a health experience. and, and uh, it helps us obviously on the basketball side of it. So I hope it's a win-win for the community and for us. And, and you know, we, we take that, that responsibility seriously and want to be great at that and want to be great role models for every kid that walked through the door.